many do you want to do Little Shop of Horrors twice? Probably the same thing that made me want to do it once. It was, uh, it's a fun show. Um, anytime I have to make the decision as to pick what show we're doing next year, it, it's totally predicated on what I think is best for the cast and crew. What do I think we have kids to do? And, um, you know, in a school our size, everything's a cycle. So sometimes you have a lot of female actors, sometimes you have a lot of male actors, sometimes you don't have many of either. So you kind of have to pick what you think the cast is going to be able to do, especially your men. And Little Shop just seemed to, to fit. I mean, uh, and a lot of the seniors this year pushed me for it because they thought it would be cool to do a show that the last time Griswold did it, it was the year they were born. So everything just kind of lined up, fell into place, and I think the results showed for themselves the, you know, is that the cast fit the show very well. So that's the single most important decision I'll make all year. So, hi Sarah. <laughs> hi Sarah. What are some things you do to get ready before you go on stage? So before I go on stage, I normally find a quieter place away from like everybody warming up in the other room and I'll run through lines in my head or I'll do stretch, depending on my costume though, because <laughs> Audrey was a little hard to do some stretching, but I'll normally like do some character voice warm ups and I'll sing or I'll hum a song, but I'll, I'll normally go like right on stage, but backstage just to get like that, to get mm -hmm. ready and get that little bug going and all the energy. So, hi Lily. <laughs> hi. So, a couple of questions. Uh, what do you love about your character, the do up girl? I loved that she was sassy. I could just, you know, the adrenaline rush from the audience, I could just really pull it off. I was set up for success. The sassy part, definitely the sassy <laughs> part. Uh, the dress yeah. helped. Yeah, the, the dress? Yes. Yeah. The pink, sparkly. Yep. With the, all the fringe coming off of it. Yes. Yeah. Well, anytime you do a show that was a popular movie, uh, that always puts a little extra pressure on you because people come in with a preconceived picture of what it's going to look like. Um, the, the movie came out in 1986, so basically anybody about you know my age, maybe a little bit younger and older, would know that film. Uh, it starred very famous comedians at the time, and and uh, it was a great, great movie. So, making sure that we produced a picture that the audience would enjoy in comparison to what the movie was able to do. And, and I feel very confident that we did it and found our own creative niches along the way. Uh, in your opinion, who is most like their character in the show? <laughs> uh, Kagan's kind of nerdy. You know, he's kind of nerdy and, and cute. So maybe Kagan and of course, you know, Dane in the plant, you know, feed me. <laughs> but Dane eats a lot, so probably works. Okay. I beg your pardon? <laughs> Tui! Tui, you talked! You opened up your, your trap! You think you, you said uh, Feed me, Papa! Feed me! No! Oh, oh I, I can't! I'm starving! Um, in your opinion, who had the best costume? Oh, Dane. Oh, the puppet? Oh, absolutely. I mean, all the costumes were incredible. Uh, they, they really are. Uh, Mr. Dash and Mrs. Maynard, uh, Nicole McCallum, they, they all did a great job with the costuming. Uh, but, you know, the big huge alien Venus flytrap that actually eats people, you just, you can't beat that. taking on this role like Audrey mm -hmm. it's definitely singing with my character voice that was challenged and like a lot that's a thing that a lot of people admired was that how I could sing with the character voice because it's something that not everybody can do and that's something that I'm very fortunate to have experience with and it was definitely a challenge especially because she's like 
she's very ditzy and I had to keep that with it and not try and sound like Sarah because here and there I'd sound like Sarah and I couldn't. So that was like the hardest thing was just to keep the character voice consistent throughout the whole show. He favorite. I think um, working with the doo-wop girls was a lot of fun in all of their stuff. I think if I had to pick one, it was the full cast suddenly seeing more when the lights kicked on and all 60-something of you were up there singing and dancing. I thought as I watched from the back of the house and, and watched the audience's reactions through the show, there was always big oohs and ahs when those lights kicked on and this massive sound came off stage. I thought that was very cool. So if I had to pick one, it would probably be that. Yeah, that one was cool. I like that one too. Friday with the alumni here, that was super high energy. So uh, if I had to pick one, it probably would be Friday because the alumni were included in that one. All right. So how is this character, the drop girl, how is she like you? Well, first of all, she's um, sassy. And I mean, I can be sassy if I really wanted to. I'm more, I've been told I'm more of a cute kind of person, but like the doo -wop girl really isn't cute. So that part of my self, I couldn't really put into the role. Um, also, the doo girls tend to, like, ignore the main problem throughout the show, you know? Like, uh -huh. the, the fact that they're all going to just die in the end, they kind of just ignore all of that. And, you know, I like to relate to that, ignoring all my problems. <laughs> hot pink dress right like there. right there in the stage so right? I mean that's not really like my thing except when I am on stage so I say that's like something that's big and different between the two of us yeah uh, how many hours do you think it took to bring the show to life oh, good lord the only way I know this number is because I saw those questions before you asked them to me and I did some calculating and my best guess is like 800 you know 800 of active rehearsal hours but I mean, there are so many more directoral meetings that happened last summer, this fall, you know, all the outside time prepping. I, mean, I couldn't even, I couldn't even fathom.
but hands on, I would say probably about 800. Um, in your opinion, what was the funniest scene? Oh, Kagan. <laughs> Kagan, when he's talking to Audrey about the plane, guess who bites the dust? Like every night. Every night I made sure I was in the back of the house to see that. So funny. Tomorrow morning, when Life Magazine comes to take my picture, you know who bites the dust? <laughs> and, okay, so last one. What do you think the audience found most surprising in the show? I was trying to filter through the comments I got in the lobby after the show. I think the, the easy answer is to say the puppets, you know, and, and the puppetry, the, the execution of, you know, that arm puppet, Audrey 2, the second puppet that very few people could figure out immediately how it was working. You know, that fake hand that's on the pot really threw him for a loop. And a lot of people thought it was a robot and someone sitting there with a controller. puppetry would be the first thing and the other thing I just got a comment was was just the strength of the of the cast top to bottom I mean no holes no weak spots and you know high school even though Griswold has a has a nice reputation you, you still walk into a high school show and you expect it to be a lesser product and the fact that these kids are able to absolutely dispel that myth with people I think shocks them you know they walk out saying these are not high school kids I can't believe that that was a high school show and it's all to their credit um, I think the other thing that got them was the tech the the, the lighting show that it, they put on and the quality of the sound <laughs> Talk about the set we had. That set was yeah. ridiculous. From the first second those doors open, people are just ogling at it. I mean, there, there's a lot of things that surprised them this year. I, I would actually put the set a lot higher than I just mentioned it. That was, people were really wowed by that set. So every year we pick something that we really invest our time and money in to give the audience something to ooh and ah over. And uh, the set was our number one goal for this year. So. It was awesome. Really proud. Let's hold it.